Sometimes when using GraphQL, we may want to use an external data source in order to populate our GraphQL response through our schema. In order to do that, we may want to use a RESTful API in order to bring back some data that we don't have stored within our database. Right now, I'm going to show you how to do exactly that using DGRAPH Lambda. In this example, we'll use a very, very simple schema. With that, we will create a Lambda to power one of the fields and to bring back some data. And then I'm going to show you how to query that field. First thing that we'll do is head over to schema and add in our schema. The schema for this is going to be very simple. It's just going to be a type of city. And then that city will have an ID, a name, a state, a country, and then current underscore weather, which is a field that we're actually going to populate using dgraph lambda. And you'll see that in this here, we have an at lambda GraphQL directive that has annotated this field. Once we have this populated, we'll click deploy. Now our schema has been updated successfully, and that means it's deployed onto our backend. We'll click OK. And the next step is to actually define this Lambda to grab the current weather field. For that, we'll head over to Lambdas. I'll take this comment out of here. And I'm going to add in my very own Lambda function, or multiple functions, actually. I'll go over each of these line by line. On our first line here, we'll see self.addGraphQLResolvers, and inside that, we see city.currentWeather, which is actually the field which we're going to attach this custom resolver to, and the custom resolver itself will be called getCurrentWeather. Now, getCurrentWeather is an async function, and this is all JavaScript. What it's going to do is it's going to get the parent data, now the parent data is the data that is within the GraphQL type itself. So stuff like ID, name, state, and country. We're going to derive that from the parent. And you can see that we're doing this on the next line. So we're deconstructing that there and grabbing out name, state, and country from the parent data type. Next you'll see that we call this function getWeather. And we'll skip down to that right now. Get weather is going to take three parameters, which is name, state, and country. It's going to build a URL. For this, you'll see that what I've done is built a dynamic string here, a dynamic query string based on some string concatenation here. So we've added name, state, and country. And I know this is what my URL needs to look like in order to grab back that data through a get request. And I've added my API key on the end there. What you'll see is that I then do a fetch with that URL, so it's going to perform a get. It will then take that response. I then will get that and format it into JSON, which is data here. And then I know based on how this is structured, I want data dot weather at zero dot description. And that's just going to bring back a simple string description of the weather, like cloudy, partly cloudy, sunny. Those types of responses are, are what we'll get. The cool part about this is, is that the actual user of our GraphQL endpoint is not going to know that we're grabbing this info from an external resource. It's just going to happen in an instant. It's going to be all associated with that GraphQL schema that we've defined. So once we have this built here, we come back, that's going to be stored in the weather object, and then we'll return weather, which is just going to be this description string that we got from this method here. You could combine these both into a single method if you wanted to, or a single function, but in this case, I wanted to keep it separate since this is making a call externally, and then this is the actual resolver here. Just for simplicity's sake, I wanted to keep it separate, but you don't have to. You could do this all within one. Now, I'm going to click Save, and that's going to deploy this Lambda. And now what we'll do is head over to GraphQL. And I'm going to add in some data using a mutation. And that is going to look just like this. I'm going to do my mutation, add city, input, name will be Toledo, state will be OH or Ohio. Country is US, and then the number of unique identifiers which are created. 
And once I do this, I'm going to run that and I've created one new entry. Now what I wanna do is actually run a query to return that entry. And I'm gonna paste that in here. Now we know <clears throat> that we're going to need to fill in this ID here. This is from a previous query that I had. What we'll do is I'm going to open this in a new tab. We'll come over to Data Studio, open like a new tab, and let's take a look here at what this looks like. So we see that we've populated a city, you know, US, Toledo, Ohio. This is stuff that's stored in the database. What you don't see here is current weather because we're not actually persisting that. It's going to be returned back to the user as if it is persisted, but within the actual database itself, it's not going to be saved because it's going to be dynamic. What I'm going to do is grab this ID here and come back over to this and I'll pop in that ID and reformat that there. Now, at this point, when I run it, what I should get back is I should get back my name, state, country, and the current weather. So let's push play. Now we can see name is persisted, state is persisted, country is persisted. We could see that when we had it here. What isn't here is the current weather which we can see is scattered clouds. And that's actually being brought back by that RESTful API call within dgraph Lambda. So obviously this is quite a simple example, but it should allow you to build out some more functionality if you need to use RESTful APIs in order to perform or retrieve some type of external data or business logic.